excited because we have Minister James Gibbs. He's going to be delivering a word today. Amen. So we want to say again, be ready to lift up God. Let God have his way, Minister James. Hallelujah. Let us receive him. Let us all stand. Say praise the Lord. We'll bless him right now. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. There's a, there's a song that is in my spirit, and I just want to at least try to do this before I minister. Hallelujah. There's a song, and it goes like this I will never look back. I will never. Look back. I will never look back again. For this road that I'm on, it's a heavenly one. I will never look back. will never look back, oh never look back, I will never look back again, for this road that I'm on, it's in heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He deserve all our praise. Amen. Glory to the name of Jesus. Ain't you just excited to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. David said it like this. I was glad <laughs> of all the places that you could invite me. David say, I was glad when they say unto me. Let us go into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Because in his presence there is fullness of joy. And pastor at his right hand there are pleasures forever. If you're seeking pleasure, the best place to be is in the house of the Lord. That is not what I'm preaching today. I figure I would just throw that in there. Amen. But, but let's do this. Uh, let's get to work. Amen. Let us just be blessed let us just be encouraged let us just be empowered amen ready to fight the devil ready to fight oh my god everything that is coming against us from the gates of hell but we are more than conqueror through him who loves us hallelujah glory to god let me just take the time out to honor the holy spirit amen without him we can't do anything Pastor, we shouldn't even try. It's not going to happen. And so we just want to acknowledge the presence of God. Amen. And our own pastors of this house, the father of this house. Amen. We just want to honor you, Pastor Mark. Amen. And uh, Pastor Andrea, I think she's with the children, but we thank God for their life. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I also want to give honor to my wife, amen. I thank God for her, hallelujah, glory to God. And all the other ministers of the clergy, we thank God that he would uh, call us for such a time like this from all different places, different faces. He brought us into the kingdom to do a mighty work, amen. And we wouldn't have it any 
other way. Glory to God. Bless the name of Jesus. And so for the sake of time, I'm very mindful, but I just want to make sure that I'm able to release what God has put in my spirit in this house. Amen. Glory to God. And so I'm just going to ask you all to stand if you don't mind. Can you do that? Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the name of Jesus. I'm going to ask you to turn your Bibles to the book of Genesis chapter 19. From verse 1 to 26. Amen. And my wife will be reading. Amen. All of it. <laughs> turn to your neighbor and said all of it. Hallelujah. Go ahead. said from Genesis 19, 1 through 26, and it goes as follows. And there came two angels to Sodom at even, and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom, and Lot seeing them rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face towards the ground. And he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and he shall rise up early, and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. And he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned in unto him, and entered into his house. And he made them a feast, and did bake unleavened bread, and they did eat. But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came into thee this night? Bring them out unto us, that we may know them. Six. And Lot went out at the door unto them and shut the door after him and said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Behold, now I have two daughters which have not known man. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you, and he to them as he is good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing. For therefore came they under the shadow of my roof, and they said, Stand back. And they said again, this one fellow came into the into sojourn and he will and he will needs be a judge now we will deal now we will deal worse with thee than with them and they pressed sore upon the man even lot and came near to break the door but the men put forth their hand and pulled lot into the house to them and shut the door and they smote the men that were at the door at the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. And the men said unto Lot, Hast thou here, as thou here any besides, besides son-in-law, and thy sons, and thy daughters, and whatsoever thou hast in the city, bring them out of this place? For we will destroy this place because the, because the cry of them is waxen great before the face of the Lord. And the Lord hath sent us to destroy it. And Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters, and said, and said, Up, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. But he seems as one that mocked unto his sons-in-law, and when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. Jesus. And while he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand, and upon the hand of his wife, and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto him. And they brought him forth, and set him before and set him without the city. And it came to pass, when they had brought them forth aboard, that he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee, 
neither, neither stay thou in all the plain, escape to the mountains, lest thou be consumed. And Lot said unto them, Oh, not so, my Lord. Behold now, thy servant had found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy, which thou hast shewed unto, unto me in saving my life. And I cannot escape to the mountain, lest some evil take me, and I die. Behold now, this city is near to flee unto, and it is a little one. Oh, let me escape thither. Is it not a little one? And my soul shall live. And he said unto him, See, I have accepted thee concerning this, concerning this thing also, that I will not overthrow this city for, for, for that which thou hast spoken. Hallelujah. Haste thee, escape, escape thither, mm. for I cannot do anything till thou be come thither. Hallelujah. Therefore the name of the city was called Zoah, the sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered into Zohar. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom, and, upon, upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven, and he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the city and that which grew upon the ground, 26 and less. But his wife looked back from behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. This Hallelujah. is the reading of God's word. Hallelujah. If you agree, let us all say amen. amen. Hallelujah. 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 I, I, I want you to just pay close attention to the very last verse of what she just read, which is verse 26. And I want you to fix your eyes in this particular verse because I think most of the time I'll be ministering from this particular verse. Amen. So, so just hang tight, just, just get settled in. Hallelujah to the name of Jesus. Let us just ask God to just bless his word. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Father, that you are forever mindful of us. We thank you that you have called us, you have chosen us for such a time as this. And so, Father, we're so glad that it's because of your mercies, it's because of your grace, it is because, oh God, of you, why we're able to stand, to come into your presence, oh God, to worship you. And so this morning, Father, I ask you that you will just breathe upon your word. I pray that it will come alive, Father, as I release this uh, into the atmosphere, that it will not fall to the ground, but it will fall upon the hearts of your people. I pray, God Almighty, that they will receive your word. Whoever had an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord will be saying. Father, I pray for deliverance. I pray for breakthrough. I pray, my God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, every spirit which is not of you, we ask such a spirit to flee right now, and you, Jesus, be exalted in this house. We ask all of this in Jesus' mighty name, we say, Amen and Amen. This is a good place to give the Lord some praise. Come on, this is a good place to give the Lord some praise. Uh, I suggest and I would think that you bring your praise with you this morning. Amen. First of all, when we got up, when we got up out of bed, we so decided that we're going to come into the house of the Lord. And the reason why we came is because we come because we say, God, we want to worship you. We want to magnify you. We want to praise you. Why? Because of your mercies on my life. Why? Because of your faithfulness because of your kindness uh, that you continue to show towards me. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so I just want to encourage the people of God briefly, and I'm going to talk to you on this subject matter today. Do not look back. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, do not look back. Now, this is not a suggestion. This is an instruction. Do not look back. There are so many pastors that have started this race. But for some reason, we need to understand that even though we are saved, we're still living in a fallen world. 
And so there's a constant wrestle to do good, but there's also a wrestle to do evil. A part of us wants to obey God, and a part of us wants to disobey God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But let me lay a foundation, and then I'm going to get into the meat of the word. Let me lay a foundation. Because, see, we do not just read the Bible as if it is some storybook. We do not read the Bible as if, as if it is a window. There's a difference between a window and a mirror. Hallelujah. If you see the Bible as a window, you look through, you see somebody else. But if you see this as the Apostle Paul say, the word of God is a mirror. The only thing, or the only person that you're supposed to see when you look into the word of God is yourself. Oh my God, I hope somebody understand what I'm saying today. Hallelujah. 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 Watch this. The Christian life, what we live, is meant to be lived in only one direction. One direction, what is that? Forward. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yet we are constantly tempted to look back to the world and the things that we left behind when we trusted Christ as Savior. Mm. Continue to look back. You know, you know, we said, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I, I just give you my life. I give everything to you. But the things of the world will always keep on just like tagging at us. Hallelujah. The danger is, my brothers and my sisters, if we keep looking back, sooner or later, we will find a way to go back regardless of the consequences. If you fix your eyes too long on the things that God has delivered you from, all of a sudden, you start to backtrack. Going back to the things that God has set you free from. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the name of Jesus. But I heard a songwriter says, it says, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will go strangely dim in the light of his glory, yes, grace. Fix your eyes in Jesus and keep going forward. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Watch this. John. John the Apostle, John the Beloved, John who was on the Isle of Patmos, he encouraged us in, first John, in verse John 2, 15. And this is what he says. He says, love not the world. I feel like I'm preaching to some Christians. I feel like I'm preaching to some folks that are saved. I feel like I'm preaching to some folks who have decided that comes what may. I'm following Jesus. And I'm not looking back. I'm not looking back. It's too dangerous to look back. So he tells us, he says that if any man loves the world 
He says clearly that the love of the Father is not in him. It's not. The Holy Ghost says it's not. See, see what we do? This is what we do oftentimes. We tend to kind of like choose what we think is okay and what we think is not okay, that is what we do. But we need to understand that we have to accept the entirely word of God just the way it is. Hallelujah. I wish I could tell you something else. But I can't. Because souls is a stake. Oh my God. Souls is a stake. Glory to the name of Jesus. I said glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, and so everyone has a past. Just right? Every one of us has a past. Some of us have loved spectacular moral failures. Some of us do that. And so what we do really is that we measure, we, we measure our sins, right? And so we decide, well, this is not such of a big sin. This is a small sin. This is a medium sin. But I meant to tell you in the eyes of God that all sin is sin. <laughs> oh, I wish somebody would shout right here. Uh-huh. And you don't understand that all sin is sin until you measure it against the plumb line of God's holiness. How are you going to know? This is the plumb line. The Bible tells us that we should evaluate ourselves to see whether or not we are in the faith. Hallelujah. You don't understand that the devil is very deceptive. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. He is, he's already have the world in his grip. So when you and I has been freed, we have to make sure that we continue to move forward. Do not look back. I'm talking to somebody. If you're watching online, this is also for you. Do not look back. You can't look back. Too near my heavenly home to turn back now. It's, 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 it's too close. To turn back. Let me go on. So all sin is a spectacular exercise in self-focus and self-worship. Uh-uh. <laughs> all sins are spectacular. Why? Because it is exercise in self-focus and self-worship. Do, do you understand? Do you understand why, why the devil was thrown out of heaven? Because he tried to exalt himself above God. How can you exalt yourself above the creator, the one who created you? How can you want to receive worship from the one who created you to worship him? Ah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I've got good news for you. 
But just understand, but saving faith frees us from sin's power. Ain't you thank God for the, for the, for the saving faith? Minister, you bless us about, like, uh, I think like a few weeks ago, you speak in faith. There are many different kinds of faith. But I love the saving faith. Because the Bible tells me that it's because of grace, by faith I am saved. It is not of works, lest any man should boast. God said I did this all by myself. I didn't need your help. I looked down and I saw your condition and I provide an antidote for your sin. So you have a right to worship me. You have a right to put me first. Hallelujah. Do not look back. Do not look back. The thing that I love about the saving faith it's, it's that it's not only frees us from sin's power, but it enables us to choose what God wants over what we want. <laughs> you don't understand what we, you, you understand what we're talking about today. I wish I have some folks in here who just like praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know how it is. It's this flesh. We all have to agree. See, none of us came into this world in any like any other special way. We all came into this world the same way. And we all face the same things. We all struggle with the same things. And the flesh always wants what it wants. But hallelujah to the name of Jesus. But when you learn to submit yourself to God, over time it aligns what, what God wants over what we want and what we desire. Hallelujah. So instead of wanting to make much of ourselves, we learn to want to make much of our maker. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. Oh my God. I sense the Holy Ghost. It's about to awaken somebody right now. Because we need to understand the reason why God has called us and placed us in this region for such a time as this. But if you're looking backward, if you're not moving forward, it means that you can never understand what the will of God is. You can't. You can't. But watch this, people of God. Hallelujah. But if we are honest, we still harbor places of self-worship in our heart of hearts. Jesus. See, that's where the problem is. That's where the real sin issue is. It's in our hearts. Oh my God. It's in our heart. And sometimes we don't even know our heart. Somebody said, well, yeah, you know, nobody know me better than I do. Liar. God knows you better than how you know yourself. The Bible said that the heart is deceitful. You think you know yourself. No, you don't. That is why we constantly need God. That is why we constantly need God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is what we do. Oh my God, this is getting so good. You need to understand... That when I minister, I minister to myself first. Hallelujah. God has called me to preach like this. I can't have it no other way. This is how he called me to preach. And even when it hurts me, I still have to preach. Because someday, I'm going to have to stand before God. And I'm going to have to give an account 
For every word that is coming out of my mouth. And if I hold back, mm, I still going to have to give an account to God. But the sad part about it is, you remember, Pastor, when God spoke to, I, th I think it was Isaiah. God says to Isaiah, my servant, when I sent you to warn a wicked person to turn away from their wicked ways, if you do not and they die, their iniquity will be upon your shoulders. And, and so, and so, I don't know why the Holy Ghost have me going this way, but, and so it's, it's a burden. It, it is. It, it is not just a, a giving some speech. It's a divine mandate from heaven. I wish somebody understand what I'm saying. And, and so if you feel something kind of like breaking up your heart, it's the Holy Ghost. God is saying, do not look back. Do not look back. Do not look back. Let me move on. Let me move on. So, so as much as we long to move forward in grace, we find our past still pulls at us. You ain't going anywhere as long as we're in this flesh. It's always going to pull at us. Trying to take us back to the old way of life. Hallelujah. But I want us to understand how serious God is. If God deliver, thank you Holy Ghost. The children of Israel. This is not in my message. God deliver them. They were slave in bondage for over 400 years. And God sent the deliverer Moses to deliver them. You know the story. And the Bible say that, that when, they, when, when, when they're gone through the Red Sea, the true test begins. <laughs> it's, it's easy to jump and shout and dance and knock over some chairs in the church. That stuff is easy to do. But, but when it comes to forsaking... Old habits, old friends, so called soul ties. Ah, we, we don't want to let that go. But the Bible say that when they were in, when they were, when they were in the wilderness, they constantly provoke God by wanting to go back. Oh, we miss the flesh. Oh, oh, it would be better if we continue to have the flesh and being a slave. Than, than being in this place where there's nothing to eat and serve you. Who says that to God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But watch this. In order to do this, it is not enough to recognize and regret our sin. This is the easy part to do. Uh, honestly, you know that there is a problem. It is a sin problem. It's easy to see, right? But that is not enough. This is what we have to do. To leave it behind, we must learn to hate it. The, the, the thing is that, Pastor, we, we're not hating the things. We're not hating the flesh. We're not hating the desires of the flesh. We, we don't hate it that much to put it aside. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. And now I can begin my sermon. So, 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 part one was kind of like us. So now let's, let's look at really what happened because we just read in the word of God. How could this even happen? Before we even get to Lot's wife. This is a lot. I'm going to try to go fast so we can get out of here. Amen. 
glory to God. But let me just do this quickly. I'm just going to walk you quickly through the scriptures. So if you notice in the book of Genesis chapter 12, I think, the Bible say that God had called Abraham this, right? And God had said to him, I'm paraphrasing, but God had said to him, listen, I want you to get out of your father's house. I need to bless you, and the only way I'm going to bless you it is for you, by faith, to get out of this place, go into a land, and they will make you the father of many nations. Hallelujah. The Bible said that Abraham responded. But if you read right there in, 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 in the later part of chapter 12, you will realize that also that Abraham has a nephew, and his name was Lot. And he was an orphan. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so because of that reason, he becomes uh, Abraham's soul's responsibility to take care of him. And so as Abraham get up by faith and move out of his father's house, he decided that he's going to bring Lot with him. So when you read uh, over in like chapter 13, you will realize that as they sojourn through the land, the Bible say that they started to increase. In possessions, they started to increase, and there was a quarrel, right? There was a quarrel, there was a strife. And so, Abraham, being a righteous man, Abraham, being a godly man, realized that he aren't supposed to be so. He says, we're a family, man, we're blood. There got to be a way how we can solve this issue. And so, the Bible say that Abraham looked, they come together, and they decide. Abraham said, listen, man... If you take the east, I'll go to the west. If you take the north, I will, oh my God, I will go to the south. Somebody's going to understand what I'm saying today. And so the Bible say that Lot lift up his eyes. And he saw the beautiful plain of Jordan. Oh my God. See what can happen when you walk by sight. See what happened when you said, I don't need pastor. See what happened when you said, I don't need nobody because God is talking to me. Oh my God, somebody just catch a revelation. God is showing me, God is talking to me. But still what happened, he chose the land of Jordan. The Bible said it was green. It was green uh, 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 from your eyes. It's appealing. And so we figure, okay, it is settled. Abraham said, no problem. <laughs> Isn't it something else? Like, people don't understand when you're called by God, you're not about fussing. If you think God told you something, then that's okay. The Bible said that you should, you should, you should, uh, you should mark a righteous man because the end of that man is peace. Peace, it's okay. You, you can go your ways. And so the Bible say that he went and he said, join in that land. Let me just fast forward. And just while he was there, something happened. Because while he was there, when you read in the Bible, I think it was up in like chapter 14, you will realize that there, were, there, there was a war where there were like kings coming together and they were fighting. And so what happened, he was captured. And all his goods and his possession. And the Bible say that one of the servants ran away and bring back the news to Abraham and said, this is happening to your nephew. And the Bible say that Abraham just uh, armed some man that was in his own house. And he went and he fight. He captured uh, lots and his good and he bring him back. But what I find very interesting is that why did he decide to stay? He could have said, oh, my uncle, I don't think I want to stay in this place anymore. But he decided that he's going to go back to the same place. And so what happened is that the place that he went back to reside is the same place that we now, uh, as we read the scripture, is called Sodom and Gomorrah. Oh, I wish somebody understand. A righteous man. A righteous man find himself in such a place. Sodom and Gomorrah. But watch this. I think this is where I begin to think about Lot and Lot's wife. You remember her, she raised a family in a city 
It's known for its sexual depravity, and she had to be physically dragged out of her hometown to escape its imminent destruction. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But when we look at it closer, our brief story has much to teach. Right? It has much to teach. The sense of the phrase, look back, is that she regarded, considered, and paid attention to. In other words, dragged free of her life of self-focus and set well on her way to freedom, she looked longingly and lingeringly on her past even as it was being consumed by the fiery wrath of God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Watch this, and I'm winding down. I think that a clue to our understanding or demise lies in what she was turned into. And I think it's very important for me to get into this before I release you today. Is that we have to understand, right? Our demise lies in what she turned into. Watch this. God could have ended our life in any way. He's God. God could have ended our life in any way. But look at what happened. God converted her. Let me go back. God could have ended her life in any way. And converted her to be covered in any substance because he's God. But the Bible gives us the details that she became a pillar of salt. Now watch this. To the modern ear, salt is a reference to a popular seasoning, right? <laughs> we, we hear about salt. We talk about, oh my God, we could just put some salt on it. It's, it's for seasoning, right? But this is because we enjoy the benefits of refrigeration. We have refrigerator now so we can put all of that stuff to get it preserved but for thousands of years the primary function of salt was not as a seasoning but as a preservative do you understand what I'm saying Jesus said in the book of Matthew 5 <laughs> verse 13 ye are the salt of the earth but he went on to say but if the salt have lost its savior Wherewith shall it be salted? It is therefore good for nothing. <laughs> Jesus said that. I didn't say that. Jesus said that, hey, listen. If the salt is not salty anymore, it is no good. He, said, he went on to say, and this is hard. Jesus is still speaking. He says, but. The only reason or the only purpose that could be used for is to be trodden under the foot of men. Under the foot of men. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me wind down. So, watch this. What if God had shown mercy to Lot's wife? What if? Turn to your neighbor and ask them, what if? What if? If God had shown mercy to Lot's wife. Let's take a look at this. What if she had allowed to flee the wickedness of Sodom to a better place all the time, harboring in her heart a love for our past? <laughs> do, you, do you know how this is what we do? This is what we do, but Jesus said it like this. He said, I cannot pour a new wine into an old bottle. If you need new wine, you need a new bottle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what would happen is that if God would bring her out and, and, and allow her to go into a better place with all of that in her heart, watch this church. The virus <laughs> of Sodom's wickedness would have gone with her to her new home. Do you understand what I'm saying? It would be preserved deep within her, waiting its chance to emerge and infect others' lives. 
That is why we take church serious. We take church serious. And we're not saying that, that, that because this is a place where we come and we continue to grow by God's grace. But it's also a place where we have to drop off and take on. The Bible says, put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh. No provision for the flesh. Hallelujah. 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 Let me go. Brother, in allowing her to preserve the cherished memory of Sodom in a new place, God preserve her as a pillar of salt. Do you understand what I'm saying? She becomes a memorial for the preservation of evil. This is scary. This, this makes me tremble. Of all the messages of all the messages that I've preached, I take a good look, and this makes me tremble. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. She becomes a preservation of evil. Watch this. A warning to all who might see her frozen in her half-turned gaze of longing. Oh, help us, Holy Ghost. Help us, Holy Ghost. Can I ask you a question right now? If your spiritual gaze were frozen at the instant or in this moment, and what would it be fixed, church? If, if pastor, if, if, if you could look into my heart, if you could see my heart, would you be able to see what is the state what is the state that I'm in? She was frozen in that state. Her gaze of longing <laughs> for the things of the world. Hallelujah. Do not look back. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask you to stand, church. I'm going to ask you to stand. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, bear with me, I'm winding down. I got to make sure that I release this. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 39, the writer went on to say it like this. He says, but we are not of them who draw back unto perdition. We're not going back into sin. We're just not. But he says, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. This is what gets me excited. The saving of the soul. So, so, so even as I have to discipline myself. I'm mindful that there are souls. That needs to be rescued. There are souls that need to be delivered. So every day is a choice to look forward toward life. It's either giving grace or backward toward sin saturated debt. The Bible say, the Bible say it like this. Hallelujah. It's gone. But the Bible said it that for the gift of God is eternal life. The gift of God is eternal life. But the wages of sin is debt. Thank you, Pastor. For the wages of sin is debt, but the gift of God is eternal life. The one who gives life is in the house right now. Somebody in this house, probably you're thinking about turning back. Or probably you are already on your way. But God would send me today to warn you, do not look back. Do 
Do not look back. Jude 1, Pastor, you preached last week, and I said, God, I said, I said, God, but you're always saying the same thing. And, and all the ministers, even our guest speaker, pastor, they're all saying the same thing. And why, why is God saying the same thing? It means that he's trying to get our attention. In the book of Jude 1, I passed the preaching that last week. I felt like I want to get up and run around the church. I could only like contain myself. I said, God, that's when the word just hit you, you know. And you know it's God. It's a confirmation. But this is what Jude 1 says, verse 23. He says, an utter save with fear. Pulling them out of the fire. Hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Our job is to pull somebody out. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 You don't understand what I'm saying. I said the Holy Ghost today want to pull somebody out. You don't understand the danger. God is trying to pull you out. I'm going to call today. I come to the conclusion and I promise, but I'm going to call today. That if you're in this house and the Spirit of God has been talking to you, I'm going to ask you to come. That's how you're supposed to come. We're not, we're not going to force you. We can't do that. I believe, I believe, and this is how you get delivered. This is how you know. I believe that once a person hears the word of God, you're supposed to respond. Has nothing to do with anybody else around you. Because at the end, it's going to be you and it's going to be God. Can I talk to those who are also watching online? As we call... For those who is in need of prayer, it also apply to those who are watching online. I want you to make an altar in your house and just come in agreement with us. You know where you are. You know your, your, your love for God, your first love. You know that for some reason that the things of this world has pulled you back. And so now God is calling for you. He's saying, do not look back. You can't look back. Jesus made a very, very interesting statement. And whenever you read the Bible and you see Jesus go back into the Old Testament and quoted a scripture, it is of great significance. You cannot miss this. So this is what Jesus say in Luke 17, chapter 32 to 33. Jesus says, remember Lot's wife. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, Jesus said this. He says, whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. And whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. Mm. Somebody is ready today to just come forward and say like, it's about time that this old flesh die. Gotta die so the spirit of God can live inside of me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Church, my prayer, and this is my prayer, and this is, this is for me, and this is for us. My prayer is that the memory of our past sins 
would be laced with the pungent odor of the fires of Sodom. This is deep, but I'm going to read it again. My prior is that the memory of our past sin would be laced with the pungent odor of the fires of Sodom. The reek of God's wrath exterminating the godliness of our former days. You know what is former days? Those days are gone. Those days are behind us. But watch this. This is what we embrace. And I'm closing. People of God, this is what we embrace. For those of us who are saved, I just want to say this to you. Continue to be saved. Do not look back. This is not the time for you to look back. You have your husband, you have your wives, you have your children. They're depending on you. They're waiting on you. But if you're looking back, how are you going to pull them out? You can't. So this is where I close. And this is where we want to stand today as we close. My prayer also is that the aroma of God's grace. Somebody said the aroma of God's grace. Somebody said the aroma of God's grace. It is the grace that saves us. It's the grace. It's the same grace we need that will continue to point us toward new life. Somebody say new life. Somebody say new life. With our eyes fixed on our Savior. God bless you. What a word.